Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk a bit about Chainlink, how we can interpret its recent price action and what it might tell us about where Link is going next. So if you've been following Link, you know, congratulations for sticking around so long because Link has really done a whole lot of nothing almost for a whole year, really ever since May of 2022, Link has just been going sideways kind of in this range. So some volatility, but really just not doing anything, not picking a direction. And this is in some ways quite impressive because Link has kind of maintained this behavior even during some pretty bleak times in the market. You know, during the FTX collapse right around here, most assets or a lot of other assets went in and set new lows at that point. You know, Bitcoin did, a number of other assets did as well. Link didn't, it kind of held its range. And then, you know, it kind of came down here and just back in December, beginning of 2023, um, but then, you know, kind of has now gone back up into the middle of that range. So it's kind of notable that Link has been able to do this even while the rest of the market or a lot of the rest of the market has actually set new lows during that whole time. But what can we make of this? What should we, what can we interpret from this behavior over this almost an entire year of sideways action? You know, beyond just saying that Link has been doing nothing, is there more that we can get out of it? So what I wanna do is flip over to our website, polaritydigital.io. This is a site that we've launched in collaboration with Jay over at Daily Crypto Analysis. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. Highly recommend you go check it out. And on this site, we have live data from all the different models that we have here at Upside Down Data. So if you've been following our channel, these will be recognizable. You know, the, the, the UDPI, Upside Downside Potential Indicators, our risk models, momentum bias indicator, our momentum indicator, and the trend confidence and market direction classifier um, models, which are uh, trend models that we have here. And so this is the dashboard I'm showing you here, which has live uh, feeds from all the different models for all the different assets that we currently track. And we can see that Chainlink is one of them. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these models and see what they're thinking about what Link's doing right now and how we might be able to extrapolate a bit from them to see about where we might possibly think Link is going next. So the first thing I wanna do is just talk about our upside downside potential indicator, our UDPI indicators. So these, if you're not familiar, quantify risk in the market and we have ones for different time frames. So I'm showing you here the short-term UDPI, which cares about moves that play out over days to weeks, so much shorter in its time preference. So that's what's showing up here in the teal, and then white is the link price across time. And in this time over here, one of the things that you'll actually note is that the, the local tops and local bottoms that link has been forming have actually been relatively predictable based on what the short-term UDPI has been doing. Really, if you're getting down below negative three or much down below negative three, those times more or less tend to coincide with local bottoms in the market. You can just go back and look for yourself. When you're down and around that level on the short-term UDPI for Link, that's generally speaking coincided with local bottoms throughout this range. And then local tops are kind of up here around the negative one level, you know, local top here, going up to local top here, local top here, local top here, local top here, and then, you know, more or less a local top that we then did bounce here as well. And so that's an indication one thing we might expect is that if we're going to continue on in this range, if Link is going to continue in this range, we might expect the short-term UDPI to track back down closer to negative three before we find a local bottom here for maybe able to bounce back to the upside. And then again, you might look for resistance up at the same level. Now that's assuming that this range will hold. And you know, really the longer that we are and the more the times that we test the upper side of the range or the lower side of the range, the more likely we are probably to break it. You know, resistance becomes weaker every time you test it and support becomes weaker every time you test it as well. So I think it's a matter of time before we break out of this. But if you make the kind of strong assumption that this range will hold, that's just one of the things that I noticed I wanted to bring to mention here is that you can actually kind of identify those points relatively consistently with how the short-term UDPI is behaving. And notably with this local top that we've seen back here, you know, just this year, we go, look, that was happening before we were anywhere close to the top of the range, but we definitely caught resistance and gotten rejected back down. So again, the UDPI, the short-term UDPI can give us insights beyond what we can just see on a price chart, which is why models like this, I think, are very useful because they can give you insights about where likely overextension points are likely to be hitting that might be hidden to you if you're just looking at a price chart um, or looking at, you know, are you at the top of the range or not? We didn't even get close to the top of the range but it seems like we've been getting, at least so far, rejected, and we might actually go back down and have to test some of these lower levels. 
So if that's again making that strong assumption that this range will continue, no guarantee of that. We could catch support and be able to actually break up to the upside at some point. But just something I wanted to point out that I thought was interesting looking at Link's price action. Now let's flip over to the long-term UDPI. So this cares about moves that play over months to multiple months, much longer term in its time horizons, not really worrying about that short-term volatility like the short-term UDPI is. And so what we can see here is that the long-term UDPI really bottomed out more recently for Link right around here into that capitulation down in May of 2022, when we actually did see at least the local low for Link. And then, you know, we kind of bottomed out there. We kind of moved back up, came down through here, and we're moving back up again. And the way that I would interpret this current level is that the model thinks that there's more room to the upside than the downside long-term for Link, but it's pricing in the possibility of more downside and especially the possibility that we could potentially break down below this range. You know, sitting up here at negative 1.35, there's a lot of room before we get back down to negative, negative eight or 4.8 rather, or whatever the low was down here which just basically is telling me that the model is thinking that downside below that range could be in the offing potentially. It's again, more biased in the bullish side. It still thinks there's more upside and downside potential that's realistic, but it's not discounting the possibility of a further breakdown. Whereas down here, it was really think that, thinking that this was about as far as we could you know, realistically or plausibly go in the short term, unless things really deviated from historical standards. So, you know, unless Link really broke from its historical precedent or everything the model knows about Link from the past, this was likely to be a local bottom, which it ended up being. Now it's less sure that that is necessarily going to hold should we go back down there and test it. So that's something we have to keep in mind. And I think really Link is going to be at the mercy of broader market conditions. I think if broader market conditions get really bearish, then a breakdown of the downside is in the cards. But if things become bullish or remain bullish, or if the stock market can resume its rally, you know, push back to the upside from here, maybe a breakout above the range is actually potentially in the cards. And something we can look at that actually gives us maybe some more information about whether or not that's likely, you know, a breakdown of the upside or downside, is to look at our momentum bias indicator or MBI. This is a model I've talked about a bunch. So basically it's quantifying the prevailing momentum in the market. So being above zero is positive momentum bias. That's when momentum to the upside is really overriding momentum to the downside and tends to be coincide with these times when price really shoots to the upside. Then the opposite for negative momentum bias. That's when downside momentum is really prevailing, overwhelming any, any attempts at upside momentum. And that's really kind of a bear market behavior. You know, these, you know, what you'll generally see in bear markets is deep red, attempts to reestablish positive momentum bias that fail, deeper red that, that drag price down even further, attempt to reestablish positive momentum, rejection again, drag price down further. Now what's notable about Link I think Link is showing a very interesting behavior here, which is also being reflected more and more by other assets, but Link has been showing this actually earlier than a number of other assets. And you'll notice that now it's been kind of more or less oscillating around zero. That kind of, it goes above, it goes back down, comes back up, goes down, up, down, you know, kind of this oscillation around zero. And I've talked about this in the past as being often a signature of accumulation, which tends to happen between bull or bearish phases and then the transition into bullish phases. And we can see that, for example, here. Bull phase kind of oscillated around zero, bull phase again. Now, Link didn't really ever have, except for I guess you could argue back here, you know, maybe this is a better analogy. We had a more of a, a bearish phase where we kind of more time in the red than the green. And then we started oscillating around zero, then it really shot to the upside. Link actually hasn't, except for this bear market, hasn't whole, had a whole lot of extreme bear markets. I would argue that this one has been more extreme than we saw back here, certainly in terms of time, how long it, it is taken. But if you look at other assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc., what you'll see over and over again is this behavior where you're in a bear market that's categorized by this exact behavior we're seeing for Link here, that then transitions into this kind of behavior on the MBI, this accumulation zone where you're oscillating around zero on the MBI, where price is kind of either going sideways, maybe a little down, maybe a little up, but then that will oftentimes lead into these big bullish moves. And so if historical trends continue, what that might mean is that Link is in this protracted accumulation zone that might be setting the stage for a bullish move to the upside. And so I think that's where if we see a positive impulse elsewhere in the market, that could be the final straw to break the camel's back and really help Link propel itself above this long, boring accumulation zone that we've been in for almost an entire year now, which might then finally give Link folks what they've been waiting for for so long, and that's for Link to do something exciting. 
it's been so long, you know, Link has just been more or less been kind of unimpressive. You know, even in the rally out of the summer of 21, it wasn't able to set a new all-time high. It really lagged behind a lot of other assets. I think a lot of Link fans are really waiting for when is that moment, like we saw back through here, where Link was really outperforming a lot of the rest of the market. I think this is the kind of behavior you'd like to see for that to be in the cards, for that to be a possibility that you can actually give some amount of, of, of probability to and say that this is actually something that seems plausible. So of course you have to always contextualize it and say that you know the probability of that is not 100%. And you know in my opinion, the probability of that is really tied to the probability of the stock market being able to you know rally further from here instead of just getting rejected to the downside. But certainly this is a point for the bulls in my opinion, that if you were just seeing this kind of behavior again, that's not a good sign. And that means that you're still very much in a bear market and you should be, you know, not really all that optimistic. But with this kind of behavior, it really opens the door. And what we've seen time and time again is this kind of behavior has preceded bullish moves. Now, if we do see that, does that mean that Link just clears on to all time highs? In my opinion, no. I think that's unlikely for us to just go straight from this kind of range to new all time highs. But what it could mean is that we actually are able to move up and test some of these prior levels, you know, getting back into the $20 range maybe or, you know, or the upper teens, for example, for finding some resistance and maybe having to try to consolidate, hopefully at a higher level. But this is something that I'd keep an eye on, that this oscillation around zero tends to happen in those transitions. And so, you know, if we think that history has any bearing on the future, I think this is something you don't want to ignore. So it's not the only data point you should look at, but I think you should be paying attention to this. And I think the fact that Link has already shown its ability to hold the range, even in the face of something as catastrophic as the FTX collapse, shows some relative strength here, where there's demand that's stepping in. And what we might eventually get to, the longer we're in this range, is a point where the sellers have become exhausted, no one else wants to sell in this range, and then you have the demand take over, move things to the upside. And so that's where I'm cautiously optimistic with Link, that barring negative kind of catastrophes in the broader markets, I think, in my opinion, you know, I look at this as being more of a bullish sign for Link than bearish. Again, I'm not assigning 100% probability by any means to that, but I think that the, the probability favors Link to the upside more so than the downside. And that's backed up by things like, for example, the UDPI having a bullish long-term outlook on Link um, in the longer term. The stage might be getting set more or less. And of course, the other thing about Link that's kind of in some ways nice, just sets it apart from a lot of other assets, is it has a big, what you might call a moat, or that's a term that's often used in the traditional markets, with this idea that it kind of has an important fundamental contributor to the broader crypto market or, or Web3. You know, it is the Oracle that provides Oracle services to the vast, vast, vast majority of Web3 applications. And so that gives us some fundamental value there. And also it is leagues ahead, it is leaps and bounds ahead of its nearest competitor. So what I've actually done over here is I've gone to the all, coin, all coins tab on our dashboard, which just lets you see all the, I think it's the top 250 that we currently have data for. And we have a really nice feature we have is this categories drop down over here. And one of the things you can select is oracles. What are the different assets that fall under the oracle category? And what we can see is that Link is by far the largest oracle in the crypto space right now. It's at 3.4 billion in market cap. The nearest competitor is that 200 and 24 million um, dollars, way, way behind in terms of market capitalization, way smaller, and the ecosystems that they um, encapsulate are smaller as well. So talking about ecosystem, you know, just go to the Chainlink website, you can see the massive, massive, massive number of different protocols that Chainlink is the Oracle service to. And the reason I bring this up is that in some ways, some of this stuff, if you're bullish long-term Web3, if you think Web3 is more growth to have than it's seen in the past that you know 2021 wasn't the all-time high for web3 then it seems unlikely to me that web3 can succeed in a massive degree and not also have link uh succeed to, uh, to a decent degree so far you know assuming that you know link doesn't get supplanted by some other competitor as long as that dynamic stays intact it just seems like link is going to grow or shrink along with web3 as well and so even though i'm seeing some signs for some you know bullish price action here even if we did break down further that doesn't really change the fundamental value of Link, in my opinion. Really, you know, the question you'd be asking more is, is Web3 something that's not going to actually become what it could become? And if, but if you're remain bullish on Web3, you know, in my opinion, being bullish on, on Link also makes a lot of sense. So not financial advice, of course, you should be making your own opinions of how to value Link, its fundamentals, where you think its price is gonna go, all those types of things. 
But I do just think that the fundamental kind of value that Link has in some ways sets it apart from a lot of other altcoins and can give a little bit more, you know, not security, you know, nothing's safe in crypto, everything's risky. But just the thought that it's it's probably less likely to just go straight to zero as some other assets that have way less adoption and actual usage. Um, and there's some assets that, you know, might be ahead of Link right now in market cap that have less fundamental value than it has as well. So that's one of the things that kind of sets it apart. And so I know a lot of people have been frustrated with Link that it hasn't done a lot. And certainly this last year, it's done absolutely nothing, basically, just chopped around sideways. But I think in the long, long term view, it's hard not to have some optimism for Link. Now, again, not financial advice. It's just my opinion. And I think you should have yet value the data for yourself and make your own opinions. But that's just one of the things that I'm looking at. So to summarize what we've talked about here, I think that Link... You know, so until it breaks out of this range, you know, it's, it's probably going to be ranged down until further notice. But when we look under the hood, especially at things like what's going on with its momentum, there's some bullish signs, I think, that might suggest that Link is, you know, even though it's taking its sweet time about it, maybe gearing up for some positive movement, a hypothesis we should watch for sure. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. A lot of updates about indicators and more over there. And go check us out at our website, clarity-digital.io. We have tons of data here. And while we're in our current kind of beta phase for the site, it's completely free to access.